From the moment the pandemic first sunk in, we had to get used to some weird realities in pretty much every facet of our lives. Professional wrestling was certainly far from immune, as WWE, AEW, and all other companies were forced to hold events without a sea of patrons surrounding the action. The idea of staging weekly TV, let alone the all-important WrestleMania, in a sterile, compromised locale without screaming fans was unfathomable. And yet, for about 16 months, it became the lay of the land. While not ideal, WWE did still manage to produce some compelling content in that year plus lurch. A good number of viable match of the year contenders throughout 2020 or 2021 that managed to thrive, crowd or no crowd. While WWE does earn a fair amount of criticism for some good reasons, one thing cannot be denied. The roster is filled with gifted professionals that can make the best of a bad situation. What lay ahead are prime examples of those that did. I'm Adam Pacino from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are the 10 best crowdless WWE matches during the pandemic. Join us! Number 10. Ricochet vs John Morrison on Raw At the very end of the crowdless era, we were granted one last gem from two men that once shone brightly on Wednesday nights, not on Dynamite or NXT, but rather Lucha Underground. The former Prince Puma and Johnny Mundo are both dazzling daredevils and can enthrall crowds when given the forum, which in latter-day WWE is admittedly not that often. Ricochet is usually relegated to secondary programming, while Morrison is... Oh, he's not even with the company anymore, is he? But as WWE said goodbye to the Thunderdome, Ricochet and Morrison metaphorically tore the house down in a false Count Anywhere match, each man letting it all hang out. After two previous Raw encounters failed to yield a clear winner, Ricochet and Morrison settled their rivalry by taking to the air with reckless abandon. 450 splashes from the rail, running springboard shooting stars, and a finishing spot with a ladder bridge put this match a cut above most other high wire offerings. It was a nice look at just how great both men can be when the handcuffs are off. Number 9. Rhea Ripley vs Charlotte Flair vs Asuka at WrestleMania Backlash Feels like forever ago that Ripley reigned as women's champion on Raw, despite winning the title on the second night of WrestleMania 37 and going on to hold the belt for nearly a hundred days. Of course, in the WWE version of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the answer is always Charlotte Flair, who will probably hit 42 total reigns by the year 2024. So Ripley holding the title, even for three plus months, can feel inconsequential. But at least we got this great triple threat match during the reign. Kicking off the tackily named WrestleMania Backlash, the three women delivered an energetic 15-minute bout that never felt slow or weighted down. In a creative spot, Flair avoided a double suplex to take both opponents down, then dropped both with a double natural selection. Ripley ended up retaining her title, pinning WrestleMania opponent Asuka with the Riptide in what was certainly the high point of her championship reign. Before long, she would be stuck in a meaningless tag team with Nikki almost a superhero, but for now, she ruled the school in Raw's women's division. Number 8. Drew McIntyre vs Sheamus at Fastlane 2021 If the bar revitalized Sheamus's career, then his 2020 onward solo run firmly reminded the world that Sheamus is a one-of-a-kind performer. There aren't too many towering heavyweight brawlers that can do what the Celtic Warrior does, and years of tepid, uninspiring booking wasted much of the big man's prime. Fortunately, Sheamus is still a physical stud in his early 40s, and he proved as much in a very long run rivalry with Drew McIntyre. Sheamus was McIntyre's last roadblock on the fast lane to WrestleMania. Christ, that's three different spring pay-per-view names there. And here, the longtime peers faced off in a no-holds-barred match. In many ways, this was a very WWE-ish brawl, but given the participants, there was still a palpable sense of intensity and brutality. The two hard hitters made a pretty hearty tour of the cavernous Thunderdome before culminating the fight back in the ringside area. In the end, McIntyre came back from the white noise through a table to finish Seamus off with a trusty Claymore. Number 7. John Morrison vs Kofi Kingston vs Jimmy Uso at WrestleMania 36 this was originally meant to be a triple threat tag team match, including The Miz, Big E, and Jey Uso, respectively. But when Miz was scratched from the proceedings due to illness, the bout was pared down to just a representative for each team. Miz and Morrison's SmackDown tag team titles were at stake in a ladder match, and the three active participants were being counted on to deliver a high-wire stunt show with no crowd there to cheer them on. 
Call them crazy for putting their bodies at risk in the empty environment, but damned if they didn't help make WrestleMania 36 worthwhile. Corkscrew splashes, Spanish flies, creative usage of the ladders, you name it, these three brought it to the dance without the benefit of 80,000 fans there to spike their adrenaline through noise. Morrison retained the titles in the end via a borderline photo finish, bringing an end to a match that would be more fondly looked back upon if Jimmy didn't sustain a knee injury that sidelined him for a year. But as a match, given the circumstances, this still delivered big. Number 6. Roman Reigns vs Daniel Bryan on SmackDown Quite the historic match looking back on it, as it marked Bryan's final WWE bout before once more trading under his real name, albeit in All Elite Wrestling. Bryan wagered his WWE career against Reigns' Universal title amid stories that Bryan's WWE contract was about to lapse. For many, the result was hardly in doubt, but it's still a match pitting arguably the best modern era technician against a Reigns that was on the run of his life. If Brian's going out, he's going out with a bang. As Brian headed toward the exit, he gave Reigns the best possible finish as the champion maneuvered his way in around the deadly yes lock to where he had top position, then hammered Brian with a flurry of crushing strikes. Reigns then followed with a powerbomb and then choked out what was left of the challenger with his trademark guillotine. The 27 minute war was as tooth and nail a championship bout as you'll ever see in latter day WWE as Brian left everyone wanting more. Less than five months later, he and Kenny Omega delivered in another televised classic. Number 5. Bailey vs Sasha Banks at Hell in a Cell 2020 For the two involved here, their match at TakeOver Brooklyn in 2015 may still rate as their shared gold standard, and in the eyes of most who herald that magical bout, nothing Bailey and Banks can do together could ever top it. Their closest joint effort might just be the one that took place inside the unfriendly confines of Hell in a Cell for Bailey's smash down women's title. For 54 weeks, Bailey clung on to the gold and her now former friend had the forum to take it away. Affixing the cell to a match just because it takes place in a particular month has been an issue in WWE for a long time, but for Bailey vs Banks, it felt more than appropriate and the two more than did the structure justice. Not only was the action hard hitting and suitably brutal, but the ending with Banks using a chair to bring the obnoxious title holder to her breaking point straddled the line between violent and cathartic. It goes down as one of Sasha's signature wins, defeating the opponent she often does her greatest work with. Number 4. Roman Reigns vs Cesaro at WrestleMania Backlash After a decade or so under contract with WWE, it was about time that Cesaro got a prolific shot of one of the company's top belts. Few wrestlers have ever possessed the exact blend of Cesaro's freakish strength, precise science and overall head-spinning athleticism and the Swiss cyborg was long overdue for a chance to shine in the main event. After beating Seth Rollins cleanly at WrestleMania, Cesaro was elevated into a short title program with Reigns, where one assumed that an instant classic was at hand. And it was. Aiding the match was a story in which Reigns insisted on battling Cesaro alone, asking the Usos to stay clear of the fray. So instead of an interference-laden main event, we got Reigns vs Cesaro in a very physical, highly technical battle battle, in which Cesaro managed to fight his way out of the guillotine in several spots before ultimately succumbing to the hold in the end. What turned out to be only a brief bite at the main event for Cesaro yielded precisely the kind of match that these two could have, which is to say, a great one. Number 3. The Undertaker vs AJ Styles at WrestleMania 36 Cinematic matches. They've really run the gamut of entertainment value, haven't they? Some, like two different stadium stampede matches, were on the high end of enjoyment, while certain overwrought swamp fights left you wanting more. More specifically, something else. The grand poobar of cinematic matches during the pandemic might just be the bout that is, for all intents and purposes, the final match for the dead man. After a few misfires in recent years, he would get to go out with a good one. Undertaker and AJ's almost literal dance of death had the benefit of following seven empty arena matches, so the macabre aesthetic was a nice change 
change of pace from that environment. What followed was a buried alive match with theatrical camera cuts and emoting, and damned if it wasn't a WrestleMania spectacle unto itself. The match also marked the final WWE appearance for the Good Brothers, who went on to make a different sort of pay-per-view history later in 2022. All in all, Styles and Undertaker gave us a marvellous fight sequence at a time when the world needed something, anything with flavour. Number 2. Roman Reigns vs Kevin Owens at TLC 2020 you may be noticing a pattern here. It's no secret that Reigns was positively rejuvenated by his tribal chief turn, as it beats the hell out of the cliched action hero he was for six years previous. Roman had a knack for performing well in big matches even then, but the attitude change has suited his work really quite bloody well. But the best of his matches since the turn? Well, that might just be his universal title match with Owens in a TLC match at, coincidence, TLC. From the moment Owens jumped Reigns at the onset, the title bout was just the chaos that a pay-per-view promising such needed. KO always shines in violent spectacles, and fighting from underneath in a veritable handicap match involving Jey Uso provided some highly viable framework for a compelling story. Of course, like so many victims of Reigns during his title run, there was just no overcoming copious interference and the interjection of a guillotine. Their follow-up bout at the Royal Rumble was pretty great in itself, but between the two, the TLC match gets the nod. Number 1. AJ Styles vs Daniel Bryan on SmackDown In a time period filled with way too much stress and anxiety, it was good when something old and reliable came along to act as a distraction akin to comfort food. AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan are definitely older, but they're nonetheless reliable, two wrestling greats that never let you down, regardless of circumstances. When the two were positioned in the final round of a tournament to crown a new Intercontinental Champion, Styles and Bryan Ryan delivered a classic befitting of their loftier standings, even if it wasn't in front of a packed house. For 27 minutes, Styles and Bryan reminded everybody why they were the indie darlings of the early 2000s, the best wrestlers in the entire business at the turn of the following decade, and why their brilliance has not betrayed them even in their early 40s. Fans were treated to the best of both men in a no BS wrestling match for one of the most famed secondary titles of all time. For nearly half an hour, we forgot the state of the world as AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan gave us nothing short of their usual excellence.